Hello, it's John Heaton, and I've uh, got a few goodies to show you today, so I'll get right on with it. First of all, I think I forgot to show this to you last time. This is a copy of Jack Bruce's Songs for a Tailor album from 1969. And what's unique about this copy, or not unique, but quite rare to find, is the credit on the back to a certain L'Angelo Mysterioso on guitar, which is George Harrison's pseudonym for George Harrison. Um, my other copy, which is a UK copy, does, does not have that. A later, the later pressings did not have the credit. And it's quite ironic, really, because if you listen to that track, track Never Tell Your Mother She's Out of Tune, it's very hard to distinguish any guitar on it at all. So if George was on it, he's very low in the mix. But anyway, nice to have L'Angelo Mysterioso there credited. Um, so that was Jack Bruce. Uh, picked up a nice copy of Tumbleweed Connection with the original booklet in very nice condition. And I played this album uh, the other night with the booklet, so followed along with the words, even though the order of the songs is completely different in this booklet to how it appears on the record. Um, there was just something nice about sitting down with a a nice LP package like this and listening to the to the album. So the album is growing on me. All you Tumbleweed Connection fans out there, don't worry, I'll, I'll get to it. It's just taken me a while, um, but certainly uh, it's growing on me quite a lot. This is a 1972 album from Gallagher and Lyle, who a songwriting duo used to be in McGuinness Flint and later had some success um, and other people covered their songs like Art Garfunkel covered Breakaway, Ringo covered um, Heart on My Sleeve, um, Mary Hopkin had covered a song called Sparrow in, on her album Postcard and this is a virtually unheard of album, didn't do anything chart wise um, but I, I saw it and thought it was quite interesting and it's very pleasant and reminiscent of Splinter in a way which is another song writing duo who didn't enjoy much chart success, um, Gallagher and Lyle slightly more successful it has to be said but um, having said that good to see Splinter back on Spotify I think all of their albums all their Dark Horse albums are now available to listen to on Spotify so recommend you check them out this was very nice to have this is a Danish single of Cold Turkey and I've seen this single the UK copies go for a lot of money so this is a Danish picture sleeve and, and it was pretty well priced and uh, it doesn't have the play loud instruction on there, as you can see, but um, it's, this was a gap in my collection. I'm still after uh, Woman is the End on picture sleeve and Happy Christmas on picture sleeve, don't have those. This was a nice copy of Walls and Bridges from Germany with the flap cover in good, good condition and you probably know what the German Apple looks like now. Look at how what good condition that record is in. Brilliant. And the Gemma Green Apple there. Uh, again, whoever looked after this record looked after it well. And I have to say that's the case of most second-hand records I bought from Germany. Uh, this was an interesting purchase. Never seen this on vinyl or CD or anything. This is a 19, 1982 album from Danny Lane. And I was familiar with a couple of the tracks because some of them appeared on CDs later on, like Running Around in Circles, Who Moved the World and Anyone Could Fly, Anyone Can Fly is, were available and I had heard of those, but the other tracks were new to me. There's no, no one particular of note playing, there's no X-Wings members or anything on here, but interestingly enough, Norman Hurricane Smith is involved, who was the engineer for the Beatles up until in, in, including Rubber Soul and then he engineered the first two Pink Floyd albums and the fourth one, I'm a Gummer, and then had a couple of solo singles in the early 70s. So nice that he's helping out Denny here. Um, so this is pretty close to the when he left Wings. So there's a, a little bit of, um, you know, the, the Wings quality left over in the songs. Um, a pretty decent standard, particularly running around in circles and the, and the title track, Anyone Can Fly. But having said that, Anyone Can Fly is a pretty provocative title, considering he just left Wings. And, uh, and with hindsight, he, he didn't do anything commercially after he left Wings. So 
to say anyone can fly was a little bit arrogant, I think. But anyway, that's just a small point. It's nice to have that. It wasn't expensive. Now, this is interesting. That you know when Goat's Head Soup came out recently with the extra album of outtakes, and I didn't buy the deluxe vinyl box, but I did pick up this copy, which is a European-only pressing, I think. This one particular copy is made in the Czech Republic. And as you can see, the alternative cover of the goat's head and the gatefold in here is the original cover photo of Mick, which was on the front cover. And the picture of Keith, was, which was on the back cover and the others, which were in the gatefold of the original. So that's quite interesting. Um, the sleeves, this is the outtake disc, got the goat's head on one side and the credits on the other. And what's nice is it's on beautiful, clear vinyl. Look at that. Brilliant. And wasn't considering it's a double album, including the outtakes, it wasn't, wasn't expensive. And the other copy, the other record has got the original in a sleeve here with the musician credits in a slightly different format there. And again, on, on beautiful, clear vinyl. So I think I paid £22 for this double album in Sister Ray in Berwick Street uh, over Easter, and I forgot to show it to you last time, so that was that. Also picked up from Discogs a copy of this 1973 classic Stevie Wonder album, Inner Visions. This, I'd long been on the lookout for this, very happy to found, find it. Not too expensive, and nice gatefold. And Yes, Thomas called and I will try and get round to doing a review of this and, and fulfilling, fulfilling this first finale as well at some stage. Um, sorry for the delay. This is uh, the yellow Tamla Motown label as opposed to the blue one which I have on a couple of other Stevie records. Um, so that was that. And then finally, I want to show you this 12-inch single from Bob Dylan. Now you might think, what the hell is he releasing a 12-inch single for? I think it was the first time and the only time in his career he's done so and don't worry there's no awful extended disco mix or anything like that these tracks are actually identical to the street legal version but baby stop crying was quite a big hit for bob dylan i think it got to the top 10 in many european countries so i guess he went along with the fad and released a 12 inch single um, but true to form he didn't give you any anything extra at all um but it's uh this was not expensive and I picked it up just just to have it really, but it's not in good shape as you can see. In fact, it's in terrible shape. I don't think I'm even going to try playing it. Um, so that's that's Bob. And then the other thing I want to say is in over Easter, I was looking going through the attic and I picked up, I saw this copy of the Boomtown Rats first album, which belonged to my brother. So if you're watching, I've borrowed it. It's only on loan, don't worry. And I listened to it. And I was actually really impressed. I wasn't familiar with the first album. And so I enjoyed that. And then straight afterwards played the second album, Tonic for the Troops, and the third album, Fine Art of Surfacing, which are all very strong albums. So I might do a feature on Boomtown Rats in a future video because I enjoyed rediscovering those, those songs and those albums. So thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.